What up, y'all? This is Kamasi Washington. I'm talking semantics with Saman. Check it out. So, Sun Ra. Yeah. What do you think he meant when he was talking about space and space? Hmm. Good question. I think Sun Ra had a realization that um, despite being very small and being very um, limited in where we can, it seems that we can physically be, we're actually huge and unlimited and like most people can they, can, they can acknowledge the vastness of space and the fact that we're not only in space, we are space and we can comprehend space makes us big like space and um, so I think you know, he was he was kind of like gearing. He 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 is understanding. He understood that. You know, what I mean, that's why he had this very expansive way of thinking. And like, I think that's what he was trying to get at, mm -hmm. like our connection to the whole universe, which is kind of overwhelming when you think about the size and scope of it. But the fact that we can even grasp it, which we can, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if I, if we can or if I can. But the fact that we even attempt to kind of as a, as a marker of how our consciousness, you know, expands us to places that our physical bodies can't go. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be afraid. I think he was a very, he was a very fearless person. So I think that like, oh, yeah. I think that um, he was just letting us know that, like I said, like that we are, we're bigger than we think we are. You know what I mean? Like space is the place, like we're, like we're in space and we, we're, we are space. We bring them here through either isotope, teleportation, transmolecularization, or better still, teleport the whole planet here through music. Talk to me about like the imagery on the cover. Like what is, what do you feel like when you look at that? The backwards compatibility of information. You know, we look at like what we know now and our technology and what we have now as being the epitome of human understanding. But then you, you look back thousands of years and humans then had a different level of, of understanding than we did, than we do now. You know, the Egyptians obviously like they were a, a people and a culture who were very creative in their, in their, in their gathering of information. So they, they, they knew things that we don't know now. They had technologies and abilities to do things that like we can't really duplicate. Like uh, if I, forget, I forget the statue that we moved. I forget we moved. There's a statue we move. I think it's Ramesses. I think it's Ramesses. Um, and we couldn't we couldn't duplicate their ability to have it the sun rise and hit his face right at you know what I mean. So there's like there's things like that that just and then just their understanding of of the universe and, and time and, and everything that is just, you know, there's a, there's a, sometimes I look forward, y'all look back. We work on the other side of time, consider time as officially ended. Um, so the next one, Ornette Coleman. Yeah. What comes to mind when, when you hear Ornette Coleman and you hear his name? The freedom of music, you know. Um, uh, I'm, this is the first Ornette Coleman rap record uh, I had. Uh, Ryan Porter gave it to me. Um, it's interesting. Um, I mean, a lot of the approach that myself and my band we take comes from Arnett. You know, like when, 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 at least when I was hearing them growing up. <laughs> First, I didn't, I didn't really realize what was happening, and then as I listened to it, I realized, oh, they're they're creating the harmony as they go, and and like that that sense of that's a that's a whole nother level of fearlessness in music and it's like you know part of why we, we write and make charts and we make arrangements and we plan ahead is because we don't we're afraid to fail and there's a degree of fearlessness you have to have to just go with the understanding that like it will be determined while we're going you know and that's you know on that 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 invention is, is powerful you know and um, I mean, people, people. Some people like the the aesthetic of his music. Some people don't. You know what I mean? But that idea to be free musically and not not contain yourself with any 
preconceived notion. I think that everyone, anyone can appreciate that. So can you talk about a little bit about like the connection between maybe like Malcolm X's ideology and like the free jazz movement? Yeah, I mean, I think um, they're both trying to free people from the confounds of their minds. It wasn't a physical freedom that they were necessarily um, going after, even though it manifests itself in a physical form, like music, sound, or, or with um, with uh, Malcolm X and, and, and his social um, revolutions, basically. Um, Malcolm X to me was um, trying to free people from the, the, the prison of self-hatred. You know, that's what that's what he did for me, at least. Um, and it, 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 even though it would come out as harsh, it's like um, when someone has convinced you to hate yourself, that you're ugly, that you're stupid, that, that your culture is primitive, and, you know, it, it takes a stern voice to pull you out of that. Um, and we, we're st we still haven't really caught up to what he understood in, in you know, in 1965 when, when he passed away, um, or when he was taken from us. Um, Ornette, to me, um, had a similar thing. Um, you know, African American music is relatively young, you know what I mean? Um, but as it has grown, and it's something that we struggle with even now, I mean, even more now, um, to to follow the construct of what has been built before you, you, you don't leave very much room for personal expression. So, like, if you're gonna follow the rules of bebop and swing and ragtime and hard bop and modal jazz and all these other constructs that have come before us in music, well, then that's a lot of rules and that's a lot of like. There's a lot of directions to follow, and it won't leave much room for personal expression. I think what Arnett came to was that you don't need to follow anything. You just need to follow what, where, where you are at, the, at any given moment, and that's what free jazz is. And it's, it's 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 playing in the moment that you're currently in, and not being so preoccupied with the with the with the directions of the plan, you know? So that's, it was a freeing of the mind from, from restrictions. It's the same thing that, that, that Malcolm X was doing. I mean, people had restricted themselves to the point. I mean, it's a little different. I mean, I think Malcolm's um, work was a little more um, directed to, to fix something that had been broken, deliberately been broken. Um, I think what Ornette was doing was fixing something that had inadvertently started to break. You know, so it's a slight difference. Okay.